Hey, brothers and sisters, welcome back for another time of Bible teaching. I am going through the comments and, um, for the last 12 hours, and oh my goodness, there are so many comments. I love it. I love it. You know, after if the after the Rosh Hashanah is over, I'm going to probably need to take a rest. Hopefully, it's in the Father's house, and he's got a nice room, a mansion waiting for me up there. And if not, I probably need to take a rest here on this earth. But anyhow, um, and again, the rapture is not guaranteed in 2024, but it sure looks like it, especially with those eclipses in 27, 28. If you haven't seen that video, look at for it. I'm serious. I just put, put another version of it out. Okay, I got a question, and it's a very good question. It was real simple. What about atonement? And it was on a video while I was explaining why Rosh Hashanah is the only day on which the rapture can happen. But what about atonement? What about Yom Kippur? Same day. Um, and they all have certain meanings. And you got to understand these days to know what the meanings are. So I could have responded and typed in a response to this person. I did. I said, I'm going to do a video now. But I know other people have this same question. So rather than me just trying to explain it, let's see what the Bible says. Because you want to see the Bible. So open up your Bible. This is a Bible study. Okay, and we want to go to Joel 2, and we come here a lot, but, but you know, and this has, because there's just so much packed into this one chapter. It's probably my favorite chapter of prophecy. And in Joel 2, 1, you have the day of the Lord is coming. That's the last thousand years. They're blowing trumpets. What's the first day of the year? Rosh Hashanah. That is of the civil year which is the beginning of years, not to be confused with Nisan, which is the beginning of months and the beginning of the religious year. All right, anyhow, um, blow the trump. I, I say that because there are some people out there teaching some bad teachings. Anyhow, sound an alarm in my holy mountain. War is coming. Let the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand. It's starting. That's that last thousand years. The last day. No, it is not one day when there's a new heaven and new earth. You know, John's the only one that really uses that term, the last day. Other people say the day of the Lord. And Peter makes it clear. He doesn't want us in the, new, in the King James Version. He says, I don't want you to be ignorant, people. A day is a thousand years. Anyhow, let me get, I'm getting off here. Um, we read this, a fire devours before them, and, and behind them a flame burns. It is like the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Surely nothing shall escape them. Is this after the Messiah comes and sets up its millennial kingdom? Or is this tribulation? All right, you're not sure? Let's read some more. Their appearance is like, like the appearance of horses, like swift steeds, so they run. With a noise like chariots over the mountaintops, they leap. Like the noise of a flaming fire that devours the stubble. Like a strong people set in battle array. Oh, this is not the millennial kingdom. If it is the millennial kingdom, I don't think I want to be there. No, this is tribulation. This sounds like a helicopter. With a noise like chariots over the mountains, they leap. All right, so then you have a repentance. Um, now, therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Yeah, he wants repentance. So many people are like, oh, you don't need to repent. Yeah, good luck with that one. So rend your heart and not your garments. Rend your heart, turn your heart back to him. And you come down here. You see right here, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, let the bridegroom, let the, I'm sorry, let the children, gather the children and the nursing babes. Let the bridegroom go out of his chamber and the bride her dressing room. These are the wedding chambers. They're leaving because they're coming back. This is Messiah in the church coming back. Um, this is in Zechariah 14. Zechariah 14 is where Messiah walks through the eastern gate. And thus, my Lord, it's 
5b, thus my Lord will come and all the saints with you. Those are the raptured and resurrected saints. This is what we see in Joel 2. But we know what day this is because of this verse here. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly. Okay? That there is one fast day. One day that God, not man, but God ordained a fast in Scripture. And it's Yom Kippur. It's the Day of Atonement. This is that fast day. There are plenty of other ones, and it's not that they're bad. Messiah was here. He didn't say, no, 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 don't celebrate. Don't observe that fast day. You know, the, probably the most, um, the one most people would be a, a, aware of is Tisha B'Av, or the ninth of Av is a fast day. That's when the Jews said, uh-uh, we ain't going in there. There's giants in the land. Um, and they've had trouble on that day ever since. This is Yom Kippur at the end of tribulation. Okay, but see, there are named trumpets in Hebrew. You know, you could get into the, and I, I'm not going to go into great lengths here, but I'll explain it to you. But in Jewish thought, the scriptures speak of three great shofar blasts that historically and prophet, with historical and prophetic uh, significance. The first, the last, and the great or the final shofar blast. All right. Have you ever heard of any of these? The first, the great, or the last? Oh, yeah. The last trumpet. That's right here on Rosh Hashanah, where the rapture is. Right? Because Paul told us it'd be the last trump in the twinkling of an eye. In other words, he told us the rapture is Rosh Hashanah, the last trump, in a twinkling of an eye, evening twilight. But when we come down here on Yom Kippur, it is known that the great trumpet would be blown. So on blow the trumpet in Zion and consecrate a fast, the trumpet being blown there is the great trumpet. Can you think about where the great trumpet might be in Scripture? Have you ever heard about with the sound of a great trumpet? Let's go to Matthew chapter 24. Yeah, post-trippers don't get the difference in these trumpets, and that's why they think what I'm about to show you is the rapture, and it's not. Matthew 24, and somebody is actually from a, a Hebraic context or background was, or Jewish background, was asking about this scripture recently. Hopefully she's there, because I'm going to get into a little more depth than I did online. Okay, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. I've actually tried to th thought about looking for a lunar and a solar eclipse at the end of tribulation, you know, seven years from whenever the rapture would be. But there are too many things in the book of Revelation, especially the seal judgments, that possibly show planets being shifted in orbits. And we're probably going to be shifted back to a 360-day calendar. That's one of the reasons I have trouble with people who, like, talk about this perfect calendar that goes back forever in the stars. Well, there was a day when planets were shifted, and we went from 360 to 365 and a quarter days. But anyhow, let's keep moving on here. Um, the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of earth, heavens, will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn. You have to understand, from a Hebraic standpoint, Tribes of the earth, tribes earth, that's Israel. That's Israel mourning. Where do we see this? It's in Zechariah 12. And it's interesting, in the Tanakh, a Jewish Bible, this is completely different. I will pour out on my, my, my I will pour on the house of, I'm sorry, and I will pour in the house of David on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. That's the Holy Spirit. Then they will look on, look on me, whom they pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son, and grieve for him as one grieves for a firstborn. So if we go back to Matthew, it's pretty obvious that the mourning here 
is those that are in Petra. Um, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds. There's a place in Scripture it says, um, I've seen a great cloud of witnesses. You know, think about if you ever heard stories about locusts, and I've never really seen locusts, but it looks like a cloud coming. There's going to be a whole lot of us. And it's going to look like Messiah is coming on the clouds. And when we get gathered up in the rapture into the clouds, it's just so many of us, it's just a cloud. That's the way I see it. I could be wrong. There is nothing that says the rapture is a cloud of people. There's no scripture like that. But to me, it's obvious. Um, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the, on the clouds of heaven in the power of glory. And he will send out his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. There's your great sound of the trumpet, and they will gather his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. And this is us being gathered from one end of heaven to the other, coming back with Messiah. I believe in Mark or Luke, it says, also mentions from earth. And then this would go to five days later, it starts tabernacles. Tabern and, and the three feasts, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and tabernacles, together comprise the great feast known as the Feast of Ingathering. You can look, Google it on Blue Letter Bible, and you, you'll see it. It's in the Old Testament. Well, the Feast of Ingathering is about bringing everybody into Jerusalem, into Israel, where Messiah is going to reign. We see that uh, one of the best places is Isaiah 11, and it's not going to give us the trumpet or anything there, but let's just go there real quick. I'm going to take my time with this video. Um, Isaiah 11. And there shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch will grow from out of his rod, roots. That's Messiah. Actually, if you get into the words, this is where you get Netzer. And it's one of the only places where one of the, the branch um, is, is there is the word Netzer. This is what tells us that he's going to be in Nazareth. That is the prophecy for Nazareth. Um, this, there are seven spirits listed here. These are the sevenfold spirits of the Holy Spirit. Um, let's go down for a little bit. This is kind of cool. This is a little description of the millennial kingdom. And the wolf will also dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf, and the young lion, and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall graze, and the young and the young ones will lie down to get their young ones will lie down together and the lion will eat straw with an ox see i read that the lion will eat straw with an ox can i have a pet lion i can ride my lion he's not going to bite me i don't know it's just a thought it'd be kind of cool to have a lion as a pet you know as long as it's friendly <laughs> the nursing sh child shall play in the cobra's hold and the weaned child shall put his hand in the viper's den. That one always freaks me out. I just don't like snakes. Um, and in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, Messiah, and he shall stand as a banner for his people. That's a rallying point. For the Gentile shall seek him. And his resting place shall be glorious. This goes into Ezekiel 43, where Messiah is going to come through the eastern gate, sit at the temple, um, he will be seated in the throne of David in the temple in Jerusalem in the midst of the children of Israel forever. And I say this again, if you're not part of the children of Israel, you are not with Messiah in the millennial kingdom. And people get all like freaked out when I say children of Israel. But that's where Messiah is going to be. All right, I got to go there. Sorry. Ezekiel 43. Um, there's the, the gate that faces toward the east and the glory of the Lord came into the temple by the way of the gate, which faces toward the east. And he said to me, son of man, this is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet that chose ownership where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. Well, Paul told us that we will forever be with the Lord, but he will be in the midst of the children of Israel forever. Hmm. All right, enough about that. Anyhow, um, and then it shall come to pass in this day that the Lord shall set his hand 
again the second time to recover his remnant of his people who are left. This basically gives you north, south, east, west. And the first time that he re, um, brought his people back, it was from um, Babylon, which at that time would have been Medo Persia. Um, he he will set up a banner for the nations. He is that banner. He will assemble the outcasts of Israel. That's pretty cool because the the Israel was dispersed in 722 BC and has yet to come back. Wow. And gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And you can read the rest if you wanted. Um, but so, back to Matthew. This is what it's talking about here. Um, that he, And he will send out his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. But that's Yom Kippur. That is... Um, what is it called? The other name for Yom Kippur. You know what it is. Thank you. <laughs> and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to another. That tells you what day that occurs on. Um, let's go in and look at this in another place. And there's another way we can see this. And if we look at Matthew, and when at the beginning of Messiah's ministry, I think we want five. You have to excuse me. I just came and started doing this. I don't have notes, so at all atonement the day of atonement yeah i think this gray hair here is what is uh causing my memory sometimes to not work as well as it could for me to have those moments i won't say senior moments i'm not old enough to have senior moments so maybe i need to cut it off you know it's getting a little long here you know a little fuzzy on the side i don't want to have to actually brush it all right so in genesis 4 Ah, let's even go back to, I'm sorry, Matthew 3. Let's look at Matthew 3. Okay, yeah. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. In those days. That's, that's actually specific days. You know, and every word's important. Why is it those days? What days? Well, let's read on saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And if you know the story, John the Baptist, a prophet, comes out wearing the camel hair, and his food was locust and wild honey. Um, yeah, no, he wasn't. He, he, he was filled with the Spirit. He wasn't eating honey from a bee. That would not be good. And those locusts, no, it wasn't locusts. Actually, it's like chocolate and something else. It's stuff off of plants. Um, but anyhow... This is um, Teshuva, 40 days of prayer and repentance. This is the time frame that everybody at that time knew when the Messiah would be coming. And that's why everybody's out there and, and they're being baptized. And everybody wants to get baptized in the Jordan. Why? Because, see, it wasn't like how we see it. You know, we see baptism as you get baptized, um, dying to your sins and arising again as a new man in Christ, and you're rising back to life, that you have died to your sins and coming back. But that's not what they did. They did it as a way of getting rid of their sins, but they did it like every year. Well, they didn't have Messiah, so they didn't know. They didn't get it. They couldn't become a new creation. So they would be baptized like every year. And it's a little bit of a different baptism. We go into more depth in this back in the Matthew Bible study. But Teshuva, this 40 days of prayer and repentance, runs from Elul 1 to Tishri 10. What is Tishri 10 on the Jewish calendar? You know what? If you're studying prophecy, you really got to understand God's calendar because you miss so much when you don't have it. Tishri 10 is atonements. It is Yom Kippur. So now Messiah is going to get baptized and he's going to go into the wilderness for 40 days. Guess what 40 days those are? Exactly. It's Teshuvah. And no, and I mentioned that how the, the baptism was just for, um, you know, sins, you know, getting rid of sins, forgiveness of sins. Well, Messiah didn't have any sins. There was another reason. 
if you were to be changing your status, going into ministry, okay, then you would be baptized. So when Messiah is baptized, it is a sign that he is changing his status, and he is now a rabbi, a teacher. All right. So let's look at a conversation he has in the wilderness with, with uh, the demented one. Excuse me, Satan. Let me do, give me a second here. It makes it a little easier for me. Okay, first of all, I've got to start up here. I'm sorry. And Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Yeah, I'd be starving. Oh, my goodness. I couldn't imagine not eating for 40 days. Wow. So this is on day 40 that this is happening. What day is this all happening on? Yom Kippur. Tabernacle. Or, excuse me, atonement. This is where he basically says, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. This is a picture of Messiah defeating Satan, sending him away, and he's going to get sent away and locked up for a few years. I don't know why he gets released back onto the earth at the end of into the world. I don't know, but I don't have to know why. I see it in Scripture. I understand it. I know it's going to happen. But this is a picture. This happens on Yon Kip. excuse me, yeah, Yon Kippur, on the Day of Atonement. That's what the Day of Atonement is about. It's about Armageddon. It's about when Messiah comes back. Five days later, the Millennial Kingdom will be set up, because that is what the Tabernacles is about. Um, and I might as well just throw this out to you. The two biggest themes of tabernacles, well, it's when the wedding feast happens. And yes, the wedding feast will be here on earth. The wedding feast of the Lamb will be here on earth with Messiah in Israel during tabernacles or Sukkots. But the two biggest things, things are that God will be living with us, Emmanuel, God with us. And it's also the most joyous time of the year. It's the happy or the most joyous time of the year. Forget Christmas, that's pagan. It's tabernacles is the happiest time of the year. Tabernacles is the most joyous time of the year. And this is also when... If you ever see, like, great joy, that phrase, it's probably tabernacles they're talking about. And it's a good possibility that tabernacles is what they are talking about. When you see about great joy, like this verse in Luke 2.10, And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all peoples. Who did Messiah come for? All peoples. So guess when Messiah was born? Tabernacles. Emmanuel. Thank you for watching. May God bless you. Have a great day.